I am delighted to introduce you today to our totally new perpetual calendar with a unique inline display, the reference 5236P. This new perpetual calendar shows the day, the date and the month in a unique large single aperture at 12 o'clock for which three patent applications were filed. The perpetual calendar is mounted on a new movement derived from our Calibre 31260 with a micro rotor and endowed with the latest Patek Philippe innovations. This new linear perpetual calendar is being launched in an elegant Calatrava case in platinum. It has a blue lacquered dial with a black gradation and a vertical satin finish. The baton style hands and our markers are made of white gold. Since 1925, Patek Philippe has been crafting pocket watches with inline perpetual calendars predominantly for the American market. We took our inspiration from this reference 725 stroke 4 pocket watch from 1972, which is on exhibit at the Patek Philippe Museum. For the first time, we have now built an inline perpetual calendar for a wristwatch. The pocket watch with a diameter of 46 mm was much better suited for this type of display because given its clearly larger format, it could accommodate a single date disc with all 31 dates, while providing a crisply legible display. Conversely, our reference 5236 has a smaller diameter of only 41.3 mm. For the reference 5236 in platinum, we were inspired by the reference 5235 in white gold, the annual calendar regulator from 2011. In the reference 5235, the case band is satin finished, but in our new reference 5236P, it is polished and set with a diamond at 6 o'clock, as in all of our platinum watches. We see the hours and minutes from the center and the subsidiary seconds at 6 o'clock. At 12 o'clock we have the inline display with the day, the date and the month in a single aperture. All discs are coplanar, meaning they lie in the same plane. At 8 o'clock we have a day-night aperture. At 4 o'clock an aperture for the leap year cycle. The moon phase display is located at 6 o'clock and is coaxial with the subsidiary seconds. We have a two-position crown, pushed home for winding, pulled for handsetting. There are four correctors. Moon phase corrector at 8 o'clock, day corrector at 9 o'clock, date corrector at 10 o'clock, month corrector at 2 o'clock. For the first time, Patek Philippe developed a perpetual calendar with an inline display for a wristwatch. Originally, pocket watches were much better suited for this type of display. Their size made it possible to place a single date disc with 31 days on the same level as the day and month discs. From the very beginning, the objective for the Calibre 31260 PSQL was to retain this coplanar arrangement. All displays at the same level in a single aperture and with perfect legibility. To address these requirements, the display of the 5236P uses four discs where the units and tens of the date are separated. To implement this display of the units and tens, we developed a completely new mechanism with no fewer than 118 parts. Additionally, these displays are paired with two further apertures one to show the leap years and one for the day-night indicator. Further, we have a subsidiary seconds dial at 6 o'clock that frames the moon phase window. The reference 5236P is inspired by the reference 5235 and features a Calatrava case with a diameter of 41.3 mm and a chamfered bezel. The finish is manually polished and at 6 o'clock the case band is set with a small diamond that symbolizes platinum as the case material. It also has several correctors to set the calendar displays.
The blue dial with a vertical satin finish is black graduated to the periphery and causes the incident light to dance. The applied hour markers and the batten hands are made of white gold. The three displays, day, date, month, are blue and clearly stand out from the white background in beautiful harmony with the dial. On the other side, we can see the balance with the Gyromax poising weights and the Spiromax balance spring, as well as the platinum micro rotor engraved with the Calatrava cross. For aesthetic reasons, the movement has six bridges that conceal most of the base movement. We will now explore the inline perpetual calendar and its self winding movement with a micro rotor. On the left, the base movement on the bridge side with its six bridges, the platinum rotor and a gyromax balance with a frequency of 4 Hz. On the right, the perpetual calendar with the seven display discs, of which two are for the date, one for the tens and one for the units. Three patent applications for the coplanar display with ball bearings, a self-blocking mechanism for the date disc of the units that prevents an inadvertent misalignment of the display with the TENS disc, the mechanism for the advance from the 31st to the 1st with no adjustment of the unit 1 for two days. The perpetual calendar mechanism is located on the dial side of the new caliber. The coplanar arrangement of the seven discs for all displays – day, date, month, leap year cycle, moon phases and day-night information – is noteworthy. We expose the mechanism because it is covered by the three bridges and the discs. It must be mentioned that much of the mechanism is set between jewels to optimize the reliability of the movement. The caliber 31260 REGQA delivered the inspiration for the base movement. It was launched in 2011, reference 5235. It had to be adapted to some extent to power the mechanism of the perpetual calendar. It has a mainspring barrel with 20% extra torque and beats with a frequency of 4 Hz. A platinum micro rotor was used to provide adequate winding power without increasing the height of the movement. The base movement height is still 2.6 mm. A perpetual calendar is a mechanism that automatically recognizes the duration of each month, anywhere from 28 to 31 days. The mechanism also recognizes that the 29th of February occurs only once every four years and has only 28 days in the three subsequent years. Every day, a pull moves the 31-tooth date star and advances the date by one day. The duration of each month is controlled by the month cam that has recesses which indicate the number of days of each month as depicted here. For the month of February, a special additional cam, also called a satellite, has four control notches. The one for the leap year is slightly higher and marked with a number four. The deeper the switching notch, the shorter the month. That's why, in the satellite, we see February with 28 days at the positions 1, 2 and 3, and the one with 29 days at position 4. This is followed by April, June, September and November, with 30 days and at the top of the cam, January, March, May, July, August, October and December with 31 days each. At each month transition, the month cam moves one twelfth of a turn to switch to the next month. We will skip the conventional function of the perpetual calendar and instead focus on the control of the date display, with its two discs for the units and tens. Here, we can see the transition from Sunday, February 28th, 
to Monday, March 1st, on the satellite's deepest switching notch. The month cam rotated by one twelfth of a turn, and the feeler is now on the uppermost switching notch of the following month. From February 29th to March 1st, on the uppermost switching notch of the satellite cam. From March 31st to April 1st, on the uppermost switching notch of the month cam where we can see that the units remain unchanged to preserve the display of the first for two days. Then from April 30th to May 1st on the deepest switching notch of the 12-month cam. The inspiration for our reference 5236 came from the reference 725 stroke 4 that was launched in 1972 and now can be admired at the Patek Philippe Museum. This pocket watch features an aperture display on one line with the à l'américaine format because the display begins with the month. It was already a coplanar display that showed the month, date and day on the same plane and in a single aperture. The coplanar display of this pocket watch was not really technically complex because the date disc with 31 days was retained and the height of the aperture, 1.7 millimeters, offered good legibility for a pocket watch. This solution was out of the question for our reference 5236 wristwatch because in this arrangement the aperture height would have only been 1.4 mm. So we split the date disc into two parts, one for the units and one for the tens. Despite the smaller movement size this allowed a very easily legible aperture height of 2.05 mm. As regards the rotary motion of the discs in relation to the others, we wanted to make sure each disc could turn independently to prevent friction and save energy. The most elegant solution was to mount the discs on ball bearings and especially to use a patented double ball bearing that consists of an inner and an outer part that rotates about a fixed component. Consequently, the TENS disc can rotate about the day disc and the UNITS disc about the month disc without touching one another. Thanks to this system with double ball bearings, the discs are kept at the correct height independently of the dial. The side view shows that the four discs lie in one plane. In the video, we can see that the jumper of the large lever advances the 31-tooth date star by one tooth every day at midnight to change the date from the 18th to the 19th, from the 19th to the 20th, etc. At the same time, we can also see the catch-up finger that is in contact with the catch-up cam. Having reached February 27th, the catch-up finger passes the catch-up cam on the return of the main lever. Then, the catch-up finger begins to move the catch-up cam during the night, from February 28th to March 1st. This also causes the date star to rotate from the 28th to the 29th, then to the 30th, and finally to the 31st. Together, the jumper and the catch-up finger now advance the dates from the 31st to the 1st of March. When changing to March 1st, the month cam performs one twelfth of a turn and with the uppermost switching notch, positions itself for the month of March because it has 31 days. At midnight, the cycle begins anew and the jumper of the main lever moves the date star to advance the date to the second, then to the third, and so forth. How can we switch from the 31st to the 1st without moving the unit's disc? This is how the trick works. The date star that we just saw has two parts. An upper part with 31 teeth actuated by the jumper and a lower part with two teeth omitted. 
The date star engages with the unit's wheel that controls the disc with the units and advances it by one day every day. When it arrives at the 31st day, the one must remain where it is. The date star moves by one 31st of a turn, while the unit star remains in place because it is not engaged. And because no tooth gaps follow, the units resume their habitual cadence day after day again, and thus the sequence continues. For the tens, the date star engages via an intermediate wheel with the date star of the tens. On this date star with the tens, we have the ten star with only four teeth, located in those positions that correspond to the date of the first, of the tenth, of the twentieth, and of the thirtieth. Thus, the ten star engages with the Maltese cross and advances the tens unit by one step, in our example from the 19th to the 20th, then from the 29th to the 30th, and finally from the 30th to the 1st. For this reason, two teeth are missing from the tens wheel for the transition from the 30th to the 1st. Another issue was the solution for the energy consumption of the display mechanism, which requires two additional wheel trains, one for the tens and one of the units. A reminder, this complex display mechanism alone consists of 118 parts. To optimize the efficiency of the wheel trains, almost all wheels are set between bearing joules, total 55 joules. The energy is transmitted from the movement via a minute wheel added specifically for this purpose. To limit and reduce energy consumption of the units and tens discs, we had to create a self-blocking mechanism for the wheel train so that the jumpers serve only to center the displays. In the case of a jolt, this prevents the wheel train from misaligning. For the TENS train, we opted for a Maltese cross, in which a square interacts with a cylindrical surface and assures that the wheels cannot turn outside the authorized movements, four times a year. For the UNITS train, we developed a patented self-blocking mechanism in which two disengaged wheels suppress the rotation of the wheels as long as the date is not driven. The unit's disc is powered by the date wheel via a drivetrain that consists of a self-blocking wheel which carries two wheels, one of which is fixed, the other spring-loaded. Due to the pressure of a spring, these two wheels tend to disengage. So the date wheel drives the wheels. The spring wheel rests against a leaf of the pinion with four leaves while the fixed wheel continues its path and then drives the pinion with four leaves that causes the unit's disc of the date display to jump. After the jump has taken place, the spring wheel retracts from the fixed wheel again. In the event of a jolt, the four-leaf pinion contacts the tooth tip of the spring wheel and prevents the unit's disc from switching the date. After the jolt, the unit's disc is repositioned by the jumper. By the way, the inspiration for this patented mechanism comes from the surprise piece that we can find in minute repeater mechanisms. It guarantees that no minutes are struck at full quarter hours. The reference 5236, with the new inline perpetual calendar in a single aperture, fills a gap in our collection of perpetual calendars because this type of display was reserved for pocket watches so far. Thanks to the new patented display mechanisms, we succeed in implementing an even larger display in a wristwatch than in the pocket watches.